Hi everybody, I'm Chris G and welcome to another edition of the Habs 360 podcast featured on allhabs.net. On uh, this week's episode that aired on April 20th, my co-hosts were Peter and Matthew. We were joined by the voice of the Montreal Canadiens on RDS, Pierre Wood, and we asked Pierre if he was expecting the Habs before the start of the season to have clinched a playoff spot with over a week remaining in the regular season. Absolutely never. Uh, I was uh, I, I was not maybe as pessimistic as some other people were, uh, because I thought uh, that what happened last year was uh, uh, was was not the real the, the real uh, depth the real truth uh, of that team. I guess that some uh, some other exterior or external factors uh, played a, an incredible role uh, in the total collapse of last year. Uh, I thought that Andre Markov come back uh, would be would have a major impact on the team. I thought that uh, a healthy Brian Jonsa would have uh, an incredible impact on the team. We knew that uh, there would be some new uh, additions. Uh, uh, Rene Bork, uh, healthy as a matter of fact, would be a, a huge factor. New acquisitions or new additions to the team. So I thought that on paper this team didn't look that bad, uh, but I thought they would be struggling. For any for that uh, usual seven to twelve twelfth uh, position spot uh, in the conference, and I thought they would barely make uh, barely miss. I mean the the playoffs. So what's happening right now uh, is still a bit of a stunner for me, as it is for most of your listeners, I suppose. Mike, do you have a question? Uh, well, first of all, hello, uh, Mr. Pierre Wood. I'm uh, extremely happy to have the chance to talk to you right now. Uh, I would uh, love... Uh, my question turned around the last year has versus this year's has, what you thought about it, but you've already answered the question. Uh, my other question was, with a shortened season, uh, with the lockout happening and everything, uh, what do you think of uh, the energy level that will be present by all the players when we hit the playoff run? That is a very, very good question. Uh, that's Mike uh, talking uh, right now? This is uh, Matthew from uh, Habs Retweet. Oh, Matthew. Sorry about that, Matthew. I, I, I don't hear th that well on my, on my cellular. That's a very good question, and that's a topic that we were uh, talking among ourselves uh, in, in the last uh, difficult sequence for, for the team. Uh, everybody was trying to put his uh, his thesis on on the table. Uh, was that a matter of a, of a natural or human letdown after clinching a playoff spot? Was that a matter of uh, you know key players at certain positions missing in action, or was that maybe uh, a sign of what things could be or could have been uh, in an 82 game season? Uh, we all know that uh, we are uh, the, the Habs are probably lacking in size. Altogether, and we—it's—it's—it's it's, it's not a given reality, but it's—it's a, it, it's a generality that, uh, uh, as in in, in, a, in a regular season, teams with with uh, uh, bigger players, uh, with uh, uh, a more physique physical approach, uh, are actually slowly progressing toward the playoffs, as opposed to smaller players, uh, sometimes uh, burning too much energy and coming a little bit short on fuel uh, when the playoff time uh, comes. So I, I, I don't have a definite answer on that. I guess what we will see tonight against the, the Capitals will say a lot, and what we'll see in this very exhausting trip coming up will tell a lot. If the team goes like 2-1, and one, for instance, in that, uh, in that trip, or if they go 2-1-1 one one as of tonight, uh, something like that, I guess that you can be a little bit reassured about the level of energy. If this uh, incredible challenge coming up uh, takes too much of a toll, there could be reasons for concerns, uh, you know, next Monday night before entering into the playoffs. Well, thank you very much for the answer. And uh, if I might add, uh, how are you feeling with all the road trips uh, during this season? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not bad. Uh, you know, I've I've been doing the eighty two the eighty two season uh, schedule now, uh, the eighty two game uh, schedule now since uh, what the last uh, ten twelve years. So we know what it's all about. Uh, it, it it has become a way of life uh, for me and my partners. Uh, I'm 
I love to fly. I'm, I'm a private pilot myself, so I can, I can live in a, <laughs> I can live the life, uh, on an airplane, uh, pretty easily. I, I can, I can, you know, I can, uh, do pretty well in hotels and on the road. So it's, it's a fun life. I wouldn't change it, uh, in the whole world. But you know what? When the, uh, the season, uh, comes to, uh, or close to an end, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit tougher. It, uh, it takes its toll on the, uh, on you. And then when playoffs uh, start, well, you've got this incredible rush of adrenaline and energy uh, that gives you uh, an extra boost to go as far as, uh, as as possible. Well, thank you very much, and we hope to to hear your adrenaline rushes when the Habs score and uh, you screen your uh, Ile uh, uh for our uh, for all of us. <laughs> Well, I think so, that, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of people are very, very uh, positive about uh, what's what's coming up. I, I know people are so passionate in Montreal and and throughout the Habs fans uh, community. Uh, I we I understand the frustration of the last couple of games, uh, but this is a team that has given us so much uh, so far, so much more that we expected. And uh, you know what? If 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 things fall into place together, and if every player plays up to expectations, not, not over and above expectations, but just play up to expectations, we could have a heck of a run in the playoffs. I'm not saying that because I'm the, the Habs announcer. My employer is RDS, not the Habs. I just say that by experience. Having been there, uh, this is a team that, uh, that, can, uh, that can actually uh, uh, create a lot of positive uh, surprises uh, in the playoffs. Hi Pierre, this is Peter. Uh, my question to you is, uh, what's the major difference you've seen besides uh, having more experience between the current Michel Terrier and uh, the first time Michel Terrier was coach of the Montreal Canadiens? The, uh, there's another great question. Uh, the overall poise, the overall uh, serenity, the overall perspective on uh, on his job and, and, and in his environment. Uh, this is a very very different man. Uh, not a different man uh, in depth because you don't you don't change uh, uh, when you uh, when you have a, a successful career like that. But I guess you adapt better uh, to uh, to this situation. I guess Michel, having been on board with us at RDS, uh, Peter, uh, the last uh, couple of years, gave him a perspective that he may not have uh, realized that much. Uh, when he was a coach for the first time in Montreal and then a coach in Pittsburgh. I think he had an interesting uh, observation post uh, working for us at RDS, having maybe a broader way of seeing things. Uh, at the same time, seeing things the way, uh, the way observers, the way fans uh, look at the, uh, the situation. So his overall talent as a coach, I, I think, uh, has been proven in the past. But his overall capacity to manage the extra, uh, the extra uh, needs that uh, are required when you coach in Montreal, I think he does that extremely well so far. And I think he handles the, uh, the public evaluation of his players very, very well. He doesn't go overboard when the team does, does well. He was very emotional uh, lately after uh, one of the big comebacks when he said, I'm proud of my players uh, when Yemelin went down uh, that particular night. But he, he won't do that all the time. On the opposite, he's not going to nail his players uh, when they don't do so well. So I, I, I think he is. The, the overall poise and perspective on things uh, is what strikes me uh, the most positively out of, quote-unquote, the new Michel Terrier. <laughs> and just a follow-up question on that. Uh, I believe you have a vote for the uh, Jack Adams uh, trophy uh, Without necessarily just saying Michel Terrier, maybe give us like uh, your top three candidates so far this season, if and if Michel Terrier is part of it. Too. Yeah, Michel Terrier is definitely part of my list. Uh, I still, uh, and you know, P, uh, Paul McLean has to be also par part of my list. You know what I try to do, Peter? I always try not to go uh, three on three out of three on coaches that have been able to bring uh, to bring teams. Uh, you know, higher than they're supposed to be. I'm always trying to keep one uh, one look or one spot on my uh, three coaches uh, list uh, on a more proven coach or a team that uh, 
maybe was expected to win, but still the coach does a heck of a job. So you also have to look at uh, what happens in Anaheim. You have to look at what happens in Chicago as well. You don't have to uh, to underlook those teams. Dan Bilesma has done an incredible job as well. I mean, his his stars are are, are constantly uh, falling uh, or missing into action. One comes back, the other goes. Uh, so you have to. You also have to look at the. Uh, uh, to what uh, coaches are doing with supposedly good teams, uh, because if you want to do your job correctly on the ballot, so uh, not taking anything away uh, from uh, from other uh, or from a Jack Capuano, for instance, uh, who's doing uh, obviously wonders with the Islanders. I would say that uh, I Michel Terrien, Paul McLean are are obvious choices on my list, and I'm going to keep uh, one spot open. Uh, until the end, uh, uh, until next uh, Sunday, the end of the season. So, so Pierre, can you talk to us about uh, the two uh, rookies in the Canadian lineup, uh, Galchenyuk and uh, Brendan Gallagher? Uh, what are your thoughts on the way they've played the entire season, and do, are they? You see them as motivated heading into the the playoff run for the Canadians? Well, the thing that strikes me the most with the two kids uh, is not exactly what they do on the ice, because what they do on the ice, they do on the ice, and that means they they have the capacity to do uh, to do what they do uh, on the ice. What strikes me is the mature behavior, the uh, the uh, the incredible uh, capacity that they show to adapt to the NHL and to uh, you know quote unquote the big league environment. Uh, I guess Brandon Gallagher uh, really uh, took advantage of uh, his uh, of uh, his sequence with the uh, the Bulldogs in Hamilton uh, during the lockout. It's the American League, but it, it is still a pro environment. Uh, so I think that he brought uh, that uh, three three months of experience with him, or three four months of experience, uh, was very valuable to him. As far as Alex Galchenyuk is concerned. Uh, this is this is rather amazing. Uh, what, what, he, what he can do on and off the ice uh, is, is quite incredible for a 19-year-old. What I love, is because we all know his raw talent, he's got incredible hands. He's got he's got the spark uh, every time he jumps into the, uh, any uh, offensive situation. But what what strikes me at 19 years old is his capacity to read the game, to understand the game. If you hear me, I, I'll just give you a little quick tip for you and your listeners. If you hear me call a name often during any play in any of the three zones, that means that the player has something special. Uh, and and that's that's what I do with Galchenyuk. He's 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 always around the play and he's he knows uh, he, has, he has this incredible uh, capacity of of understanding where his teammates are. So you know, I guess they they have incredible talent and and they they perform uh, even higher than than expected. But for me, the thing I appreciate the most out of those two kids is their maturity and their capacity to adapt uh, to the NHL. Yep. So that was the voice of the Montreal Canadiens on RDS, Pierre Wood. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Like uh, Mathieu said, we hope to hear a lot of your goal calls here until the end of the month of June, hopefully Canadian goals. And congratulations on your nomination for uh, the Gala Tis for uh, Animation Demission Animateur. Sorry, Emission yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so, very much, Peter. Uh, I, as I as I nicknamed myself, I'm a bit the Suzanne Lucci of uh, sports uh, television. <laughs> I get I get nominated <laughs> often. I only won once. Uh, but uh, the nomination is very sweet. I appreciate it. I know it's a it's a survey made out of uh, viewers, television viewers. It's always very heartwarming. We don't do the job that we do uh, for that purpose, but when that happens, it's always uh, uh, very heartwarming. So uh, uh, thank you for the for the good wishes, and thank you for uh, having me officially for the first time on Blog Talk Radio. Now I know a little bit more about a new environment and. Uh, I'll, don't be a stranger. I'd be I'd be delighted to uh, to come back one of those days. I hope you enjoyed the sample of this week's episode of the Habs 360 podcast. If you'd like to listen to the entire episode, including details on our new Sweet 701 contest that will allow one listener to get a hundred dollar gift card, click on the link on this page. 
A reminder that you can follow me on Twitter at ChrisG1980, Peter at Peter Galanos, and you can follow Matthew at Habs underscore retweet. The next episode of Habs360 will air live on Saturday, April 27th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Follow us on Twitter at Habs360 for more details. Thanks for listening and have a good week.